we have worked extensively with perfect tenses and we know that in sentences depicting such tense, the auxiliary verb shows the tense and the main verb shows a completed action. Now in this slide, there are three declarative sentences portraying the perfect tense in the past, present and future. It also shows the associated verb forms. You can pause the video to go through them in detail. Now let us read this sentence. My mother has baked a chocolate cake. Now this is a declarative sentence portraying the present perfect tense where has is the auxiliary verb which shows the tense and baked is the main verb which tells us that the action is completed. Now if we say has my mother baked a chocolate cake. What have we done here? We have exchanged the position of the auxiliary verb and the subject my mother to get an interrogative sentence portraying the same tense. In this sentence also has the auxiliary verb shows the tense and the main verb baked shows a completed action. So we have used has in this sentence because our subject is singular, my mother. If we change the subject to plural they, how will we write this sentence? In that case, we will write, have they baked a chocolate cake? So, in the interrogative sentence, portraying the present perfect tense, the sentence form can be has or have followed by the subject, followed by the past participle. Had she completed her task before going out to play? Now this is an interrogative sentence portraying the past perfect tense. How do we know it portrays the past perfect tense? Because the auxiliary verb helps us to portray the tense. So had she completed her task before going out to play is an interrogative sentence in this tense. Now if we change the subject from she to they, then how will we write the sentence? In that case also we will write, had they completed their task before going out to play. So we see that interrogative sentences portraying the past perfect tense have the form had followed by the subject, followed by the past participle of the main verb. Will she have left by noon tomorrow? Now in this case, we have two auxiliary verbs, will, have, and the subject is placed in between these two auxiliary verbs. The main verb is following the second auxiliary verb. So this interrogative sentence is telling us or portraying the future perfect tense. Why? Because we can see it says, will she have left by noon tomorrow? Now we have used this form with the subject she. If we change the subject to they, how will we write the sentence? In that case also, we will write, will they have left by noon tomorrow? So we see that interrogative sentences portraying this tense has the form will or shall followed by the subject, followed by the auxiliary verb have and then the past participle. Now let us do this exercise. Complete the following sentence in the future perfect tense. What is the sentence given to us? Dash the exams, dash by this time tomorrow. So we can see that it is an interrogative sentence and the verb given to us is finish. Now we know that the form of interrogative sentences portraying the future perfect tense is will followed by the subject exams followed by have followed by the past participle which is finished in this case. So our sentence will be Will the exams have finished by this time tomorrow?
Now let us read the sentence here. Has my mother baked a chocolate cake? Now we know that this is an interrogative sentence portraying the present perfect tense. But this is a positive interrogative sentence. If I write, has my mother not baked a chocolate cake? In this case, also this is an interrogative sentence, but it is a negative interrogative sentence. Why? Because we have included the negative word not. So has my mother not baked a chocolate cake or hasn't my mother baked a chocolate cake is the same thing. In the second case, we have used the contracted form of has not, which is hasn't. So, the negative interrogative sentences portraying the present perfect tense can be written in two ways. We can either write has or have depending on the subject followed by it, followed by the negative word not and then the past participle. So, you can see that we include the negative word before the main verb or we can use the contracted form. To write hasn't or haven't followed by the subject and then the past participle. Now how will we form a negative interrogative sentence using the verb not complete to portray the past perfect tense? We will write had she not completed her task before going out to play. So, we can also write the contracted form which is hadn't to portray the same meaning. So, we can say hadn't she completed her task before going out to play. So, we can say that the negative interrogative sentence can be written in two ways. In this tense, we can write had followed by the subject followed by the negative word and then the past participle or we can write hadn't followed by the subject and then the past participle. Now we have a sentence given here. Now this sentence has to be a negative interrogative sentence portraying the future perfect tense and the verb given to us is not leave. So how will we write this sentence? We will write Will she not have left by noon tomorrow? So what have we done here? We have included the negative word before the second auxiliary verb. So we have will she not have left by noon tomorrow? Or we can write won't she have left by noon tomorrow? Won't is the contracted form of will not. So the negative interrogative sentences portraying the future perfect tense can either be written as will or shall followed by the subject followed by the negative word then the auxiliary verb have and then the past participle or we can write won't followed by the subject then have and then the past participle. Now remember, we never use the contracted form of shall not. Now let us do this exercise. Complete the following sentence in the future perfect tense. And the sentence given to us is dash the exams dash by this time tomorrow. The verb given to us is not finished. So we know that this has to be a negative interrogative sentence portraying the future perfect tense. Now we already know what the sentence form will be. It will be will followed by the subject, the exams. So will the exams not have finished by this time tomorrow? Or we can write the contracted form as won't the exams have finished by this time tomorrow. So what did we learn today? 
Today we have learnt the use of perfect tenses in interrogative sentences. Now we know that interrogative sentences can be either positive or negative. So the positive interrogative sentences portraying the past perfect tense are written as had followed by the subject followed by the past participle. In the present perfect tense the interrogative sentences are written as has or have depending on the subject followed by the subject and then the past participle. In the future perfect tense the sentence form is will or shall followed by the subject followed by the auxiliary verb have and then the past participle. In negative interrogative sentences the forms are two types they can either be had followed by the subject followed by the negative verb not followed by the past participle or we can use the contracted form to write hadn't followed by the subject followed by the past participle to portray the past perfect tense. In the present perfect tense the sentence form is has or have followed by the subject followed by the negative word and then the past participle or hasn't or haven't followed by the subject and then the past participle. In the future perfect tense the sentence can either be written as will or shall followed by the subject then the negative word not then the auxiliary verb have and then the past participle or we can write won't followed by the subject then have and then the past participle. Remember we never use the contracted form of shall not. So now that we know the perfect tenses in declarative as well as interrogative sentences I hope you are very comfortable working with them. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to get all learning resources as per ICSC, CBSC, IB, Cambridge or any other curriculum. Over 5000 amazing lectures across maths, science, English and social science. Our unique interactive video technology keeps you engaged and our iDictionary feature allows you to quickly revise any concept. Master each topic at your own pace with our adaptive practice technology and 1 million plus questions. Get instant answers and detailed solutions. Be exam ready by taking unlimited mock tests, performance analysis with actionable feedback, personal tutors to resolve your slightest of doubts. That's not all. You can also win amazing prizes like PlayStation, iPad, watches and many more along with certificates through our Earn As You Learn program. So learning at Delta Step is not just fun and easy, it is also rewarding. So register for free now.